Star Playhouse presents Charles Boyer, Dick Powell, David Niven, Ida Lupino, I'll be checking out tomorrow. <laughs> Don't let this bother you. It's a typewriter, not a time bomb. I know. Sign here, please. You're David Sheridan, aren't you? Yes. I've watched your program. I've always enjoyed it. Thank you. Can't imagine what you're doing here in Haydenville. Oh, you can't? Is there a telephone in my room? No, just the one here. Well, may I? Distance phone call, please. Thank you. I want to talk with Mr. Ed Logan in Chicago. You're going to reach him at the United Broadcasting System. That's right, Logan. Ed Logan. And please reverse the charges. My name is David Sheridan. Thank you. No, thank you. Is the story really this important, Mr. Sheridan? It depends on what you mean by this important. Important enough to bring you here. <laughs> you flatter me, miss. News is important. I'm not. I'm just here for the story. Then you'll televise it, coast to coast. Mm hmm Well, hello. Hello, Ed. Yeah, yeah, I'm calling for a little town named Haydenville. Just east of Columbus, about 20, 30 miles. Yeah, I was finishing up on that strike story in Columbus, and I heard what happened down here. It seems that a boy named Fulton was being held in jail on a murder charge, and about three hours ago, some 400-odd public-spirited citizens broke down the jail and held a lynching party. Yeah, that's right. I got her on the wire and took a taxi down here. All oh, things are rather quiet now, hardly anybody on the streets. Oh, and Ed, send a cameraman down here, will you? Make it Sam Baker if he's free. Yeah, I'll spend tonight here, and tomorrow morning, if Sam can get some pictures, I'll use the story as a feature on tomorrow night's program. Yeah. Yeah, I want to take what happened in this pig sty and make the whole country conscious of it. What's the name of this hotel? Baxter. Uh, I'm staying at the Baxter Hotel, Ed. I'll be back in Chicago tomorrow afternoon. That'll give us plenty of time to develop the film and clear the story. Right. So long. Will it do any good, Mr. Sheridan? Featuring the story on your program, I mean. Well, it's news. That's my business. It's not news anymore. It won't be tomorrow night. The wire services have all carried it. Any paper that wants to mention it will do just that in the morning. I'm sure they will. Maybe I think it's big enough for more than one mention. Will it help? <laughs> May I have my key, please? You know you're very inquisitive. I can't help it. This is my town. After it all happened, oh, I don't know, it's hard to say, but it was all so horrible. Everyone in the town feels that way. They're ashamed, and they want to forget it. Well, when a child breaks a lamp on purpose, he'd like to forget it, too. Especially when his father lays him over his knee. Was that why you're here? To spank the town, Mr. Sheridan? I came for a feature story, miss, not an argument. Oh, after I get settled, I want to talk to the police chief. Could you tell me where I could find him? Down the street, about a block. Oh, and then you must have heard all the commotion from here. Tell me, while 400 people were killing a man, what were the other 500 people in this town doing? I don't know about the others. I was very busy. Busy? I was praying. 
to get your version of what happened, Chief. Yeah, I see. Look, Mr. Sheridan, it all happened so quickly. Well, I thought it best that I get the truth from you, otherwise I just might have to pick up gossip from the street. Let's go into my office. Like I was saying, there was a man here from the Columbus Wire Service a short while ago. He got the cold facts. Well, Chief, I think I'd like more than the cold facts. I I'd like all the facts. All right, here they are. The boy's name was Fulton, Richard Fulton. Around noon today, he broke into old Mrs. Winslow's home. Figured she was out. Mrs. Winslow was a sweet woman. The whole town loved her. When she discovered Fulton looting her house, she screamed. He beat her with a poker. Are you sure of that? He was caught leaving the house. And he confessed when we brought him in here. That's his signature below his words. Go on, please. Now, well, like I say, everybody loved old Mrs. Winslow. That Fulton was a no-good kid. Word got around what he'd done to Ms. Winslow, the whole town seemed to go nuts. People started gathering in bunches to talk it over, and then talk started getting wild. And you didn't send for reinforcements? No. I didn't figure they'd really do anything. I, I figured it was just talk. Well, I know most of the folks in that mob, Mr. Sheridan. I, I didn't think. I still can't believe it. No. Tommy, did uh, Fulton have any family? Yeah, father. Pretty old man. He's in the lockup now. We figured it'd be safer for him there than at home alone. Hmm. Like to talk to him, if I may. Afraid you'll have to wait till morning. He was so upset we had the doc give him a sedative. Ah. In that case, I'll go question some of the townspeople. Afraid you won't find many. This is a small town, Mr. Sheridan. Folks around here go to bed early. Do they dream? These folks around here, Chief, do they dream? What do you mean? Oh, nothing much. I just hate to count all the nightmares tonight. Good night. Thank you. Any messages for me? Yes, there was a message from Chicago. They said to tell you that a Mr. Sam Baker would be able to be here by morning. Thank you. Oh, by the way, is there any place open around here where I might get something to eat? No, most places here close early. I could fix you a sandwich and a cup of coffee, though. I'll bring it up to your room for you. Thank you. Appreciate it. He's in room five. Thanks for calling, Carol. My name's Fielding, Bruce Fielding. May I come in, please? Please do. Thank you. Would you sit down? Oh, thanks again. Uh, I've come to talk to you about your program, your television program. Oh, yes, I imagine you did. Mr. Sheridan, I'm acting mayor of Haydenville. The regular mayor's quite ill, so I'm more or less in charge. Miss Baxter told me that I might find you here. Oh, I see. She also told me that you intend to feature what happened here tonight on your television program. And I've come to ask you to please reconsider. Oh. Mr. Sheridan, what happened here tonight is deplorable. There's no question about that. But a small town like this goes on year after year in a very inconspicuous way. It never gets any publicity. Most people don't even know where it's located. Then suddenly it's to be publicized for this, well, this accident. Now, that can do a great deal of harm. Some people might even move out of town. And a few industries that we hope might come here will probably change their minds. In other words, it's a shame that Richard Fulton was hanged. It's bad publicity. Mr. Sheridan, please don't misunderstand me. I'm sorry for what happened tonight. I think we all are. But you're right. Just now, I am concerned mostly with the publicity. I don't see what good running the story on your program can possibly do for Richard Fulton. And it can hurt Haydenville's future. That's my concern. Oh, okay. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, Fielding, is it? Yes. Uh, uh, Mr. Fielding, I can understand your, your uh, position, but I think probably you should try and understand mine. My business is news. And a good definition of news is anything that happens that's out of the ordinary. Now, I'd hate to think that lynching is ordinary in this country. I see. <laughs> well, I still hope that you'll reconsider. Now, I'm not just a small-town politician. I know my way around pretty well. We're not a rich town, but we do have enough money for certain uh, necessities. Now, I brought a good deal of cash with me. 
No one need know anything about this. If you'll just name the amount... I'll... Get out of here. Well, I thought to... Out. Oh. Uh, maybe I made a mistake. You did. Uh, well, uh, no offense, Mr. Sheridan. Uh, good night. Brought your sandwich and coffee. Put it on the table, please. And do me a favor, will you? Don't send any more visitors to see me. I was only trying to help. Help who? You, Mr. Sheridan. You've come here to lambaste a town you don't even know. You've said it's a pigsty full of stupid people, and you're here to play judge and punish our sins. You read too many books. I told you it's a story, that's all. I understand how you feel about a man's right to a fair trial having been denied. But a mob doesn't think about rights. Do you understand how a mob works? Do you know what can happen? Put her up, Charlie. Let me go, let me go. Hey, Bill, grab that kid. Got him? Keep your hands off me. You can't do this to Freddie. You can't. Go, oh, Freddie, jerk. No, don't do it. You can't. You can't. Mr. Sheridan, I asked you a question. I heard you. Do I know about mobs? I know all I care to know about them. You say you didn't see what happened here tonight. Well, I did. Not tonight, but a long time ago. I saw a man I loved, an old man who used to play with me and make toys for me. I saw him dragged out of a jail and lynched. I was only 12, but they held me and I watched. The next day, they found out old Freddie was innocent. Everybody was ashamed, but that didn't bring him back. I'm sorry. I didn't know this was something personal with you. Well, it's personal, all right. I'm older now, and I can't be held. And you're right. I don't know your town. I don't care to. Got 400 stupid people who made up a mob, and I don't like mobs. Shall I wake you in the morning? Don't worry. I won't oversleep. No, I don't imagine you will. Tomorrow's too important, isn't it? Tomorrow you dissect a town. What would you call it, Mr. Sheridan? A day of revenge? Well, there it is, Sam. Haydenville. Yeah, I missed seeing it when I came in. I must have blinked. You sure this town hanged a guy don't look like enough people to pull a rope? Well, they're all home, probably. I want you to get a shot of the street, the jail, the tree where they hung him, everything. Cover the town from top to bottom. I can do that with a brownie. We'll make it fast. We can get a train out here at 1 o'clock. OK, but where do I find everything? The tree, the jail, you know. Well, use your head. Ask somebody. I'll go with you myself, but I need more copy. Where will I meet you? Right here, before 12. This man wants to see you, Mr. Fulton. Uh, Mr. Fulton, I'm a reporter. What is it you want? Well, I realize it may be difficult for you, but I would like to hear your version of what happened. There's only one version of what happened. Sickness. A great sickness. My son was sick. Many said he was a bad boy, a no good boy. My son was a sick boy. And when his sickness made him kill an old woman, others grew sick. And their sickness killed my boy. Did you happen? I saw them drag Richard out of the cell. I heard them yelling and screaming, but God was good. He allowed me to be struck unconscious then. I see. No one can see. When Richard was a little boy, he fell in the creek, and he called out to me, Daddy, Daddy. I went and pulled him out, and then he grew up, and I was no longer Daddy, but Pop. Last night, he saw my face in that sea of angry people. 
I couldn't get to him. But I heard him calling to me. Daddy. Daddy. Thank you, Mr. Fulton. Thank you. Daddy. I hope you got everything you wanted, Mr. Sheridan. I did, thank you. Good. Your public's probably very interested in your opinion of what happened. Oh, I think you'll be more interested in the kind of people that hang a man. Tell me, what time does this program of yours go on the air? Shortly after 7, I do a segment of the news roundup. I'll be watching. Well, I hope you will be. In fact, I hope your whole town will be watching. <laughs> How are you doing, Sam? Well, I shot all the town streets, the town hall, the tree, even the house where Fulton killed old lady Winslow. This ought to wrap it up. Good. Got it. Oh, 11 o'clock. We'll get that 1 o'clock train easily. Swell. I'm anxious to get back. I left a cute little blonde in the bar last night. <laughs> You think she'll still be there? Yeah, she's not very bright. I told her I had to go out and buy a postage stamp. Now I'll tell her it got stuck to my tongue and took a long time to get loose. Mr. Sheridan, there's a message for you. You're to call Chicago, operator 23. Oh, thank you. Sam, take the machinery, will you? Hello, operator. This is David Sheridan. I have a message to call Chicago, operator 23. Would you get them for me, please? Yes, thank you. Sam, why don't you go out to the room, take a rest before train time? I can use it. I feel like number 19 in a 20 mule team. Yeah, you look the part, too. Wait a minute. Better take the key, and I'll use breaking down the door. You finished your business? Yes, sir. Got everything you wanted? Everything, thank you, yes. Uh, hello? Oh, hello, yes, Ed. Yes? Yes, we washed everything up just a little while ago. Well, we can get a train out of here at 1 o'clock for Columbus, and then we'll fly over. Should be there on 5. That's right. No, I'm happy with it. You just make sure the lab's clear to take care of Sam's film. Right. See you soon. Well, that's that. Mm-hmm. That's that. And now you go back to Chicago and tell the world what you think of Haydenville. Well, let's say a watered-down version. Mr. Sheridan, would you do me a favor? That depends. I'd like to borrow an hour of your time and show you Haydenville. I've seen it, Miss Baxter. Have you? You've seen a jail, a tree, and a heartbroken old man. I'd like to show you more. Please? Well, as long as we can be back within the hour. It'll take less than an hour, or it'll take forever. That's well, getting colder. I was born in this town. I lived here all my life. Who were you born, Mr. Sheridan? Small town, Arkansas. You've gone back recently? No. Oh, that's too bad. I can imagine leaving the town I was born in, but not forever. Hey, you. Hey. You're that television guy, ain't you? Well, here I am. Charlie, you'd you better go home. You stay out of this, Carol. This guy came here to find out what happened last night, didn't he? Well, let him get a good story. You want a good story, don't you? That's right. OK, then. I was there. I helped. I helped swing old Mrs. Winslow's killer to a tree, so there. Go on, tell the world. Tell him Charlie Barnes tied the knot. I don't care. I ain't sorry, you see. Didn't mean a thing to me. You always drink your breakfast? Look, so I had a few drinks. So what? Uh, so I got a cold, that's all. I just want to make one thing clear. I ain't sorry, you understand? Fulton had it coming to him. Mrs. Winslow was the sweetest old lady in this town, and he beat her brains out. He had it coming, and I ain't sorry. You got that straight? I ain't sorry. You go on home now, Charlie. I just ain't sorry. I just ain't sorry.
one of Haydenville's vicious beasts, Mr. Sheridan. Charlie's a carpenter, has a nice wife and three sons. I've never seen him drunk before. He was pretty upset. He's human. Did you bring me out here to interview the population? No, I brought you out to show you the town, the town as I know it. I wanted you to see the church that the townspeople built with their own hands. I wanted you to see the park where the children play. Surely you can't hate our children, too, Mr. Sheridan. I want you to see this town as it is. One question. Why? Why go to all the trouble to show me around? What's the point? Because you're an intelligent person, Mr. Sheridan. If you weren't, I couldn't expect anything. And just what do you expect? A fair trial. Stand by, Mr. Sheridan. And that takes care of the international situation. Now we switch you to Chicago for today's feature story and David Sheridan. Good evening. In your newspapers today, there appeared a story I told of an incident which took place in a small town in Ohio. Last night at approximately 7 o'clock, 400 of the town's 900 citizens rushed the town jail and dragged Richard Fulton from the arms of the law. He was hanged nearby. When I heard about it, I was very angry. I went there. I wanted to see this town of 900 where a mob had lynched Richard Fulton without benefit of a fair trial. The name of the town is unimportant. But what happened there is important, and there's no excuse for it. When I returned to Chicago late this afternoon, I called two psychologists and asked them about mob violence. This is what they told me. Anyone is vulnerable to mob hysteria. An average man is three times as likely to accept suggestions in a mob as he is when alone, no matter how wild or unreasonable that suggestion may be. The mob member ceases to reason as an individual and is swept along with the mob without reflecting or criticizing what he normally might condemn. That is what I was told. I believe it can happen to anyone, anywhere. If he allows himself to become a member of a mob and discards his own reason for the unreasoning passion of a crowd. I didn't intend to speak like this tonight. As I said, I went to the town because I was angry. A man had been hanged without benefit of a fair trial. I hated the town before I got there. I hated it even more while I was there. I thought its people were an ignorant, stupid form of beast. I hated them and their town because of what had happened. And then, before I was to leave, a young woman made me take one hour of thought, one hour of quiet reason. She showed me around the town I hated. Yes, I saw the jail from where Richard Fulton was dragged. I also saw a plaque commemorating nine young men who had given their lives in the war. I saw the tree where Richard Fulton was hanged. I also saw three churches that were well filled on Sunday. Yes, I saw many things during that hour, but only two really important things, both sides of a story. You see, I had been like a mob. I had gone to that town to lynch it because of the terrible thing it had done. And the important thing that the town had denied Richard Fulton, I had denied that town. A fair trial. This is in no way an effort to minimize or excuse or even whitewash the incident. Last night, a mob committed murder. 400 citizens, men and women, put a young man to death. I won't forget what happened last night. None of us should. A mob is a vicious, frightful thing, and we should all condemn it. But what we must keep in mind is that these criminals, these murderers, were men and women not unlike ourselves. People who traded their reasons for the blind emotions of a mob. One day, they will meet the highest judge of all. Let him condemn them or pity them, but let us not imitate them. Fear what happened last night. Fear it because it could happen to you. The only effective way to avoid mob violence is to refuse to let yourself become part of a mob. I repeat, it could happen to you. God forbid that it does. Good night.